Hi everybody. We are nearly a year to this pandemic, the lockdown, and I'm going around and there's still not that many places where our kids can go out. You guys, you guys can go out everywhere. No, and I'm really sorry about that, but let's hang in there, okay? And I'm sure in the middle of all this stress, you're asking, where is God? I, I want to be able to hear from Him in my situation, in, in the stress of my online learning. Are you feeling that stress? Are you, are you asking God to speak to you, to help you out? When I'm feeling like I'm lonely and I'm looking for my friends, are you, are you asking God to, to be with you? Well, we're going to start a brand new series where we're going to talk about God calling out to His people. In fact, he's, He wanted them to pay so much attention to them, He called them twice like a double call. For instance, if I were to call out to some of you, Skylar, Skylar, or Senpai Zach, Senpai Zach, you know, I'd call you guys. And Zeke, Zeke, you know, double call to that, just to make sure that you're paying attention to God. So why don't we start to worship God, open our hearts up to Him. Why don't we even pray right now? Holy Spirit, help us. As we open our hearts to you, hear our hearts, please speak to us. Allow us to hear your call for us despite our fear despite what we're going through despite our sorrow we want to hear our father this we pray in jesus name amen why don't we let's worship him now And welcome to Kids Church, our online worship service for kids. We're glad you can join us today. If it's your first time, welcome. We are Victory Kids and we exist to train the next generation to honor God and make disciples. Aside from Kids Church, our big kids also have their huddle time. Huddle time is a time after the service where our big kids ages 6 to 12 years old meet with volunteer teachers to discuss what they've learned during the service. These teachers were our kids' church volunteers even before the pandemic. But wait, there's more. As we discuss our lessons in kids' church, kids get to meet and fellowship with others their age too. Hi everyone, I would like to ask all of you to stand up as we start worshiping God today.
It says in Proverbs 19 verse 23 from the New Living Translation, Fear of the Lord leads to life, bringing security and protection from harm. When we know God's commandments, when we know His teachings and instructions, we'll know what it means to fear the Lord. His instructions and teachings will guide us to a wiser life. We'll be able to know that there are consequences to our actions and God knows which decisions will lead us back to Him. My hope is that all of us will begin to seek God, our Father, and see that we are fully secured in Him. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for another wonderful day. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to worship you again, Lord. And our hope is that as we read your word, as we study your teachings, we'll be able to learn what it is to fear the Lord, what it is to know your teachings, what it is to follow you and love you with all our heart. Lord, show us your wisdom. Show us your guidance. And in Jesus' name, everybody say, Amen and Amen. Another way of worshiping God is through tithes and offering. If you want to give, you may follow the instructions flashed on the screen. Hello! Konnichiwa! Annyeong! Sawadika! Salut! Ni hao! Shalom! Hola! Kumusta? My name is Teacher JC JC! And I'm Teacher Plum Plum! And welcome, welcome to, to Kids, Kids Church, Church for Big Kids. Kids! So, Plum Plum, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, JC JC! Okay! <laughs> so, before the kids get weirded out, Let's tell them why we're calling each other two times today. Welcome to a brand new series called Double, Double Calls. Calls. Today, we are going to look at certain people in the Bible whom, number one, God called. Number two, God called by name. And number three, God called by name twice. twice. Example, Sophia, Sophia. Or Rain Rain. Shout out to Sophia Rain on Facebook. We heard the song that you composed. Great job. Great job, Sophia. So anyway, kids, you get the point, right? Double calls. So with that, let's do a short activity. Teacher Plum and I will say all the names we know that usually double. And you have to give yourself a point if you actually know someone who has a name like that. So one point for each person you know with the name that we say. And three points if your name or nickname is actually the name that we mention. Mm -hmm. Teacher JC and I will also keep score. All right. Ready? Ready. And go! go! John John. So I have one point. Because you know one. And John John is my nickname. So three points. Okay, John John. <laughs> Jack Jack. 
Do you know anyone with the name Jack Jack? I don't know anyone called Jack Jack. Uh, me too. But I know what Jack Jack from The Incredible. So that's one point. Okay, that's okay, one, one point, point for me also. Fifi. Fifi. No, I don't know anyone. I don't know personally anyone who has a dog named Fifi. <laughs> so how many points do you have? I still have four. Four. I have two. Yeah. Um, Paul Paul. Paul Paul. <laughs> I have a cousin whose name is Paul, but we don't call him Paul Paul. Do you know anyone named Paul Paul? If you do, give yourself a point. Mm -hmm. How about Mimi? Mimi. I know someone who's named Mimi. Oh, my aunt. Her name is Mimi. Yes, I call her Tita Mimi. Alright, that's five points for me now. Jun Jun. Jun Jun. Oh, I have a friend whose name is Jun Jun. It's very weird. I don't know anyone named Jun Jun. It's very popular here. In the yeah, it's very right? popular here. It's uh, short for Junior. Alright, so that's... Uh, I have three points. I have six. Yeah. All right, and um, uh, Coco. Coco, I know Coco Martin. <laughs> <laughs> but not personally though. No, no. no but that no. counts as a point. Okay, like, that counts as a point. How about JJ? JJ, no, I don't, I don't know, know anyone personally who's named JJ. How about okay. Didi? Didi. Uh, uh, nada. <laughs> I only know that one from uh, the cartoon series. Dexter's when I was, uh, yeah, 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 that one. I'm Dexter's sure lab. you guys don't know that anymore. So that's seven points? Five points All right. for me. And How then, about CC? No, I don't no. know anyone. <laughs> How about Gigi? Uh, I know someone named Gigi. I have six points. I, I don't, but that's what we say when we have a good game. Gigi. 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 Good game. <laughs> uh, what about Jojo? I know. Uncle Jojo. Oh, you have an uncle named yes. Jojo. I just know that one from an anime series. Does that count for me? Yes, Okay. Counts. Eight points. How about Tom Tom from Coco Melon? Oh, I don't watch Coco Melon. Eight points for me. Uh, what about Lulu? I know Lolo, my Lolo. <laughs> no, that doesn't, doesn't it's count. Not, it's that doesn't count. How about Bam Bam? Mm, I know that one from the Plinso, okay. but I don't know personally anyone. But that's considered one point for me as well. Yes, I okay. have nine points. Oh, we're, we're tied. tied. Last one, Vivi. No, I don't. Do you know? No. Oh, oh! We're tied. We're at tied. Nine, nine points. points. How many points did you guys get? Comment down below. We want to know. I'm sure you know more than nine. Yeah, but uh, this week. We're gonna be tied for the games. Yes. All right. So it's gonna be your score against our score. Nine. My points. Who won? I didn't realize I knew so many people with names that repeat, and I'm sure you know more people with doubled names than Teacher JC and I. Mm -hmm. Well, our lessons in the next few weeks are about people in the Bible with just one name, but God called their names twice. Let's watch this video and listen to the preaching of the word. Hello, hello. Hi, kids. Have you ever been asked to do something that you don't want to do? Tommy, Tommy, do the dishes. Bella, Bella, share your favorite pizza. Benjamin, Benjamin, fix your bed. Parents ask us to do a lot of things at home. Sometimes we don't want to obey, but most of the times we follow them because of who they are, our parents. In our Bible story today, we see a man who was asked to do something really difficult to do, but he did it anyway because of who was asking. And this man's name was Abraham. Abraham was given a son to his wife, Sarah, after 100 years of waiting. Yup, he was 100 years old when he became the father to his son, Isaac. One day, when his son, Isaac, was a teenager, the Lord asked Abraham to return Isaac to him. God wanted Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. Abraham swiftly obeyed. There were no buts nor complaints. He simply said yes. Abraham and Isaac journeyed to the mountain, and the sad father set an altar made of wood, grabbed a knife, and lifted his arm to slay his only son Isaac, when God called out to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, do not touch the boy. Whew, that was close. Then the Lord said, now I know that you fear me because you have not kept your only son Isaac from me. So instead of the boy, God gave Abraham a ram nearby to serve as the sacrifice. Abraham sure had a tough choice to make if 
he were to decide, he sure wouldn't want to sacrifice his son Isaac. But when God asked him to do it, he did it. He knew who was asking and he feared the Lord. As Christians, to fear God doesn't mean to be afraid of Him. To fear Him means to honor Him and to respect Him. To do what He asks and to do everything to please Him. And that's it for our man of the story, Abraham Abraham. Next week, we'll look at the story of his grandson, Jacob. Jacob, Jacob, call you later, kids! Hi, I'm Pastor Brandel, and I'm excited to share the word for us today. We'll be starting our double call series for big kids. And before we start, I would like to greet Marco Tuso a happy, happy birthday. And I pray that you had a wonderful celebration with your family. And today we'll start with the word. Abraham was an ordinary man, not special at all. But God picked him to be the ancestor of God's people, Israel. It will also be through Abraham's line that the Savior of the world would be born. But because Abraham was an ordinary man, God had to mold and shape him to be the person that God wanted him to be. Abraham went through a lot of things in his faith until the time that God came to check whether Abraham really believed and feared him. One day, God called Abraham to sacrifice his beloved son Isaac at Mount Moriah. Guess what Abraham did? He left early the next day with Isaac to go to the mountain. It says in Genesis 22 verse 9 to 12, When they reached the place that God had told him about, Abraham built an altar, placed the wood on it, Next, he tied up his son and put him on the wood. Verse 10, he then took the knife and got ready to kill his son. Verse 11, but the Lord's angel shouted from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Don't hurt the boy or harm him in any way. The angel said to him, now I know that you truly obey God because you were willing to offer him your only son. You know what? Bible scholars say that the angel mentioned in this verse is actually Jesus. So it was Jesus who called him Abraham, Abraham. One thing that we can see here is that God calls us to make him number one in our lives. During the times that God called people twice in the Bible, God was calling them for something that is great. In our story, God was calling Abraham to fear and obey him. Abraham showed that he indeed feared the Lord. God was more important to him than his own son. God was number one in his life and in his heart. Abraham showed that he was ready for the calling to be the father of many nations and to be the ancestor of Jesus. Maybe for us to better understand, let me show you something. I think you'll find this cool. I have here a ball and I have here some rice and a container as well. Do you think everything will fit inside a container? Let me show you how we can do this. I'll put the rice first. And then once the rice is inside, I'll put the ball and then try to close it. Oh no! I can't close the lid because it's so full and the rice might even spill. Let's try to do it the other way around. This time we'll do it the other way around. We have the same amount of rice, we have the same ball and the same container. But this time we'll put the ball first and then we'll pour in the rice. Let's see if it will fit. Yes, it fits. So let's see if it will close. Yay, it closes. The ball is there, same amount of rice in the same container. In our experiment, the ball represents God. Sometimes we prioritize other things before God, like we don't think He's that important. You play all day and do lots of fun stuff, but when it comes to reading your Bible, or maybe it's your prayer time already, you suddenly get too sleepy or too hungry or anything else that suddenly you think you should do right away instead of spending time with God. And maybe sometimes when God calls us to obey or our parents ask us to do something, but because we want to do what we want to do, we just forget that God wants us to obey our parents. That's our tendency sometimes. We only think that He is important when we want something badly. 
and that's when we pray earnestly. That should not be the case for us. God must be front and center of our lives. He is like the ball in our experiment that we should prioritize first because He is the most important person in our lives and the one we love the most, the one who is in our hearts. Everything else must come after God. So how do we put this into practice? Let's say this together. I will make sure that nothing takes God's number one spot in my life. Let's put God first in our lives. You don't have to be afraid that God might ask you to sacrifice a loved one. But God is certainly calling us to love Him more than anything else in our lives. If this means giving up something that is threatening to dethrone Him as your number one in your heart, like online game, that's taking up your time, taking up your heart, and taking up your devotion to Him. And all these things are making you cranky towards your family members. Being that obsessed is surely not God's will for you. He wants you to grow in character, in faith. So listen well to God's voice. Maybe He's calling you twice to make Him the number one in your heart. So for our series, Power Truth, I'd like us to remember this. God calls us by name and gives us purpose. For our power verse is Isaiah 43 verse 1. Don't be afraid because I have saved you, I have called you by name, and you are mine. Abraham was about to sacrifice his son Isaac, but God prevented him from doing so. Hundreds of years later, God sacrificed his own son, Jesus, to pay for our sins. But he did not stop the sacrifice. He let it continue and allowed Jesus to die on the cross so that through Jesus' death and resurrection, we would be reconciled to God. Isn't that wonderful? that God gave His Son to die on the cross for us so that we can be reconciled to Him. And my prayer for all of us is that we would give our all. We would let Him be 100% in our hearts and live our lives that put Him first. Let's pray. Lord, we thank You. We thank You, God, that um, You gave Your Son, Jesus, on the cross for us to be reconciled with You. Thank You, God, for loving us. Thank You, Jesus, for being our King. Lord, we pray, Lord, that in everything that we do, that you'll always be first. That even if sometimes it's hard, we know that you will be there with us. The same way then that you stop the sacrifice of Isaac to see what's in our hearts, God. We pray, Lord, that in everything that we do, you will always see yourself first in our hearts. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Wow, that was an awesome story. Wouldn't you love to be like Abraham, to be able to hear God? Of course, the giving up of my son and my almost my favorite person in the world. I don't think I can do that. Have you ever had to give up something? Have you ever had to, to, to obey God in a way that was tough and hard? I guess the important thing is to really be able to hear from Him. So why don't you click on the Zoom link, join your other teachers, join your other friends, and we'll discuss how it, how it is, what are the ways that we can hear from God. And have you ever experienced hearing from God and asking you to, some, to do something that was kind of tough? Maybe obeying your parents, maybe being good to your brothers. I don't know what it is. But share your stories, okay? Click on the link and we'll see you there. And we're back. Hello. Our challenge question for the week. Is God number one in our lives? If not, how can we make Him number one? Comment your answers down below because we would love to read them. Yes. And for your family con. Conversations with your family. Here is the question. How can you show that God is the most important person in your life? We encourage you guys to talk about this with your parents and siblings so you can hear each other's thoughts and ideas. And that's it for our Kids Church service for the week. Don't forget to like this video yeah. and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell to, to always, always be, be notified, notified of our new videos each week. So, see you next week, kids! Bye! Bye. God bless!